This is Common Core State Standard Support video for mathematics, standard 7 NS 1B. Okay, this is pretty lengthy. Uh, the introductory statement for this standard says, apply and extend previous understandings of addition and subtraction to add and subtract rational numbers. Represent addition and subtraction on a horizontal or vertical number line diagram. And then specifically part B states, understand P plus Q as a number located a distance absolute value of Q from P in the positive or negative direction depending on whether Q is positive or negative. Show that a number and its opposite have a sum of zero or additive inverses. Interpret sums of rational numbers by describing real world context. Now that's quite a bit so let's take it a little bit at a, at a time. In the preliminary statement for standard 7 NS1 uh, it talks about uh, you know, previous understandings of addition and subtraction. Now in grade six, students extended their previous understanding of numbers to the rational numbers. And in grade six, negative numbers were introduced in standards 6NS.5 and 6NS.6. .6. Now a little bit of a clarification here. Notice uh, what's in red in standard 7NS1. Apply and extend previous understandings of addition to add rational numbers represent addition on a horizontal or vertical number line. Now the focus here is addition because the standard after this one subtraction of rational numbers is covered uh, in standard 7NS1C. So again the focus is going to be addition of rational numbers. Now let's look specifically at 7NS1B and let's look at the first part. Understand P plus Q as the number located at a distance, absolute value of Q, from P in a positive or negative direction depending on whether Q is positive or negative. So let's take the most simple example where P would be zero. So when we're talking about P plus Q, well Q could be, if we're talking just the distance, it could be a distance of Q in the positive direction or it could be a distance of Q in the negative direction from that starting point. So if we take that scenario and let's say that P is zero and that's our starting point and the absolute value from that point is four, well again we could be going four in this direction which would put us at a positive four or we could be going a distance of four in this direction which would put us at a negative four. Now let's try a different starting point other than zero. Let's say P was seven, so that's our starting point. And the absolute value of Q is four, so I'm going to travel a distance of four from seven. Now we need to consider both contexts. Uh, if we travel four in the positive direction, then obviously we start at seven and we go four this way, which would put us at 11. Now, if we travel four from seven, but in the opposite direction, then when we're talking about location, then I've got to go four to the left, which would put me at three. Let's try another example. Our starting point for P would be negative three. And the distance that we want to travel from that point is five. So again, let's say we started, we're starting at negative three and we're going to go five in this direction. Well, let's see, where would that put us? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, so that's a negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So that puts us at a positive two. But, let's say our distance is going to be in the opposite direction. So now, we would have negative three as our starting point, but the distance that we want to travel is five, but we want to go in the opposite direction. So where's that going to put us? Well, let's see that be, one, uh, let's see, negative four, negative, uh, it's going to put us at negative eight because we went in the opposite direction. So, of course, we want to uh, have students write these out so they start connecting the symbolism to what they're really doing on the number line. Now, let's look at the second statement in this standard 7S1B. Show that a number and its opposite have a sum of zero or their additive inverses. Now for simplicity, let's assume that P is a positive number so that there's no confusion with the signs and so forth. So, if we're starting 
at zero and then we go some distance p, and we're assuming that's a positive number initially, then I would go to the right a distance of p from zero. But then when I go in the opposite direction, where again I'm adding uh, the opposite of p, uh, well guess what, I'm going to end up right back where I started. It'd be sort of like if I went 10 miles away from home and then I traveled 10 miles back to the house, I'm back where I started, so I'm at zero. Now let's apply the commutative property. Now let's say that uh, we're going to go in the opposite direction this time. Uh, we're going to go a distance of p to the left to begin with. And then we go a distance of p but back to the right. So again, I'm going to end up back uh, where I started at zero. So again, this is the idea of the additive inverse, that any number plus its opposite will always be zero. Now let's look at the last statement in the standard. Interpret sums of rational numbers by describing real world context. Now teachers can design a whole bunch of real life contexts that involve sums of rational numbers. What you have to be careful about, you know, the key is that the result indicates location not the total distance traveled, which really would be focusing on absolute value, or that it involves the distance between two points because that's really subtraction, which is the next standard, 7NS1C. So with that in mind, let's uh, look at some examples. Let's say Josie is 35 miles from home. So this is her starting point right here, 35 miles from home, assuming that home was zero. She travels 20 miles farther from home. So how far from home is she now? Okay, so she's starting at 35. We're gonna go a distance of 20 uh, further away from home. So I'm actually going in the positive direction. Let's see, this, these are in five, so they'd be at uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we would be here, and that would be 40, 45, 50, 55. So we would be a distance of 55 miles away from home. Let's take that same problem, almost, <laughs> except now she's 35 miles from home, but she travels 20 miles back toward home. So notice that again, I'm going a, an absolute value 20, of 20 miles, a distance of 20 miles, but this time it's in the opposite direction. So now, I'm going to start at 35, but I'm going to go back toward the house, a distance of 20 miles, and this is in 5, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, so I would be here, and that would put me at, uh, let's see, 30, 25, 20, 15. So that would put me 15 miles from home. But again, note the difference, and it was very easy to ma manipulate this question, this scenario where I could just by changing the numbers a little bit uh, make it both contexts where I'm traveling a distance in one direction and in the other problem I'm traveling the same distance but in the opposite direction. Let's try another problem. Manny has $250 in his savings account. He deposited $75. So what's his new balance? Now deposit means that you're going to add $75 to this. So addition of a positive number is going to take me in this direction. Uh, let's see, these are in 25s, so that would be uh, one, two, that would put me here, which would be uh, 275, 300, 325. So the new balance would be $325. Now, simply by changing the wording a little bit, uh, this time he has $250 in savings, but he withdrew $75. So what's his new balance? So again, we're traveling the same distance, 75, but this time we're going in the opposite direction because he took money away from his account. So let's see, we're going to go uh, 25, so we will end up here. So that would be uh, 225, 200, 175 is where his new balance would be. So again, basically the same problem, just change it a little bit uh, to change the context where you're going $75 in the opposite direction. Let's try another example. Uh, temperature. Let's see, the temperature in Anchorage is minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It then rose 35 degrees. 
what's the new temperature? Well, let's see. Starting point is here at negative 20. We're going, it's going to rise 35 degrees, so we're going to go a distance of 35 this way. Uh, let's see, these are in 5, so that's uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35. So we're here, which would put us at a positive 15 degrees Fahrenheit. We can take this same exact scenario and just change the wording a little bit where it started at uh, 20 degrees, uh, well, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and it dropped 35 degrees. So this is the current temperature, but it's going to drop 35 degrees. And ooh, I'm going to have to make up a, a little bit more. So let's see. We go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Five, so we would be here. Let's well, let's just count. Let's see. Uh, that'd be 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So we would be at negative 55. <laughs> so it's definitely uh, pretty cold in Anchorage uh, because we started at 20 degrees below zero and it dropped 35 degrees. So we're now at minus 55 degrees. Another similar scenario. Uh, let's talk about uh, depth. A submarine is at a, at a depth of 1,600 feet. It rises 400 feet. What's the new depth? So if we start at negative 1,600 and we go upwards 400 feet, these are in increments of 200, so we would be uh, negative 14, negative 1,200. So we would be at negative 1,200 for our new depth. Now we can take that same exact problem, tweak it a little bit, but instead of rising 400 feet, the submarine is going to dive 400 feet. So we're going to travel an absolute value of 400, but in the opposite direction. So in this case, okay, we're going to drop. So that's 18, that's 2,000. So then our new depth for the submarine will be negative 2,000 or 2,000 feet below the surface. Now it should pretty much cover the standard but again, the focus is from a number line perspective. So again, if I've got uh, some number uh, and I can go uh, you know, a positive distance, I can go a distance of Q this way where this will be pl P plus Q, but we also have scenarios where I'm going to go a distance of Q this way, so that would actually be P plus the opposite of Q. But you might want to throw in uh, other ways of looking at adding uh, a distance of Q either in a positive or uh, negative direction. And that's by using some kind of manipulative, manipulatives sort of like this, where let's say the, uh, the black checker uh, would be uh, a positive one and the red is a negative one. And this enables you to set up quite a few different types of scenarios let's say something like this. Now the idea is to pair these up in such a way where I have a one and a negative one and we uh, just learned that those would be additive inverses, those would be zero. So we have another one plus negative one which would give me a zero and I have another, uh, well I guess what we would call a zero pair. So what do we have left here? We would have this. Now it's a good idea to always take what you're doing with the concrete manipulatives and connect it back to you know, what it looks like symbolically. So in this case, you know, the five plus negative three uh, ended, up, ended up with the manipulatives to be two plus zero plus zero plus zero, which gives us our final solution of two. Now this is important, this whole idea of an additive inverses because it's one of the founding ideas and uh, building blocks for algebra. Uh, so you know, adding zero is very important. So again, doing something like this would help to start ingrain that idea of the additive inverse. And so there's other scenarios that you could apply to this. Let's say you start off with a negative five and you're gonna add a positive three. Well, again, just like before, uh, I want to pair up a plus one and a minus one because we know that that's zero and this is what you would end up having. But again, the idea that you know, nothing really gets canceled or thrown away. 
is just the, uh, the idea again that I have these zeros, uh, these zero pairs. But again, it's important that, you know, the negative two just, just magically appear. Again, you, you actually have a negative two plus three zeros, which still gives you a negative two. Again, very important for laying the foundation for solving equations, the idea of the additive inverse. And just one more example. Let's say they're all the same. Let's say I have a negative five plus a negative three. Well, this just involves throwing them all together, so I end up with eight of them, but they're all negatives. You know, nothing changed uh, so as far as a sign. So we have negative five plus negative three would be a negative eight.